Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Sandra Smith is the author of the award-winning middle grade slash young adult series called The Seed Savers. She has a garden of her own. She keeps chickens, and she lives with her family in the Pacific Northwest. Welcome to the program, Sandra. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to join not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country. And you're you're a very unique guest that we've, uh, we're having on today. You're, we've never had and never interviewed a fiction writer So where does the passion of writing come from for you? Many people we have on talk about growing tomatoes or vegetables, but you're a little different in this realm. Well, first of all, I'm I'm honored to be your first fiction author. And even though Seed Savers series is fiction, there's a lot of um, facts and truth woven into the story. Um, My passion for writing is just I've, I've always been a writer, I think, because I'm an introvert. Maybe I, uh, it's easier for me to communicate through writing. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's what, uh, you were asking, but that's, you know, you can clarify if you wanted something different from no, that. We all have our own, uh, uh, desires and our own drive and, and that's yours. Yeah. I understand. I am, I am too an introvert and do enjoy writing myself and I get it. It's, uh, it's a way to kind of get your, thought so in a way you can express yourself without like standing up in front of people <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly so your book series why don't you tell us about your book series um what it's about and then also where your inspiration for that book series came from yeah so basically um the seed saver series is uh, it's five books and the gist of it it's it's set in a future where home gardening has been outlawed for years and fresh food is uh, pretty much unknown and unavailable because it's ultra-processed and controlled by a kind of corporate-owned government. And so in the story, the kids are kind of the heroes, and they're the younger generation, and they don't know what food is. And then they're, like, on this journey learning about it from an older mentor. And I was first inspired by watching the documentary um, Food, Inc., in that In that documentary, there's a lot to do with the meat, but there's a point where there's um, this guy named Mo Parr who is a seed cleaner who cleans the seeds for farmers. And in the documentary, they start to say, like, you know, there were used to be this many seed cleaners and now there's this few. And I was just thinking, uh, I've never even heard of that occupation. And then my next thought was, well, what have you never heard of a seed? And then that's kind of how... The story starts where these kids are given a seed or they hear about seeds first. And they're like, what's a seed? They didn't even know, like, the word seed. So that was the basic inspiration for the story. Well, you you say that it's it's set in the future. Whenever you describe that, some of our listeners as well as I are thinking that may not be so out of the realm of possibilities in the very near future, the way some people believe that the government and other important are so to personal labeled important agencies are trying to uh, dictate how certain things are done in this country. Right. And uh, I used to think, um, you know, maybe the extreme of it in my book was kind of far fetched, but then there are uh, certain, you know, laws. And then, I mean, for that part of the the story, and then there's also this idea that, uh, there's just a lot of kids that, you know, don't know, like, that a carrot grows underground, for instance. Right. Because all their food is from bags. Right. They just think it's at, where do you get vegetables? Grocery store? They have no, right. they, they're, there's such a disconnect there that yes. we, we've lost a lot there uh, in, in just a few generations. Yes, yes. And so this is taking it forward. I don't think I mentioned, like, the year in the first book, but it ends up being, like, 2077. And so I use, uh, up until 
like now, I, I actually use really real events and laws and stuff. And then after now, I, you know, I got to make the best of that up. So. Oh, okay. That's, that's neat. Now, yeah. you like to motivate social change for young, young adults, um, through your stories. Why is that important? And I think we kind of touched on that with like, you know, how things are changing rapidly. It seems like almost every day, but why is that important when you started the series? Yeah. And I, it, and it was kind of interesting when I read that, I, um, people have asked me that. And, um, I don't think when I, um, origin when I wrote the first one that I was intending to motivate social change, it was more of a, a love story for food, <laughs> but I do think it is important for um, children to realize that they can help change the future because, after all, the future belongs to them. And so I want it to be an empowering story for kids. Um, but I think originally, um, I, you know, I grew up on a, a berry farm and my mom had a huge garden and we didn't we didn't buy very many things at all. We canned and we froze and, you know, we grew our own beef, milk the cow, that sort of thing. And so for me, I just really love food and growing food and cooking food and eating food. And so there's really a lot of that <laughs> in the first couple of books. And then it gets more political because it kind of it kind of had to because of the situation that caused, you know, the whole conflict. Right. Being, you know controlled so yeah yep and just for people are tuning in we're listening we're speaking with sandra smith author of the award-winning middle grade young adult series seed savers so how did you go from farm life to city life uh where how did that happen well it's just one of those things that happens in life i didn't mean to end up in the city i um you know i went away to college and then then I went to China for three years and taught English, and then I came back and um, I lived where it was available for me to live. And so, you know, someday maybe I'll get back out there, but it wasn't necessarily uh, a choice. I'm going to leave the country and go live in the city. How how has how did growing up on a, on in the country on the farm how has that benefited you by whenever you moved to the city obviously you probably took some of those skills and was able to incorporate <laughs> some of into your daily life. Yeah, I kind of try to recreate on my little lot and a half <laughs> as much as I can. And so, you know, I've planted all along the yard. I've got a, a garden and, and I've got my four chickens and there's the pear tree. And so I still, um, I still grow as much as I can. And then I, my mom and dad still have, have the big garden and I grow things out there as well. Do you, and I, I still can, you know, I'm, I'm going to go pick my 100 pound of peaches tomorrow and, and can those all up. So <laughs> I guess having grown up there, um, I don't have this fear of, you know, pressure cookers and all kinds of things that I hear about. Definitely not. Um, now, does your, does your spouse remind you to lock the doors? Like I have to remind Joey sometimes who grew up on a farm to lock the doors because I'm, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the city girl here. So no, because. Because we um, at my house out there, we always we always locked the door. I know some people in some places didn't, but we always did. So. <laughs> now, not a problem. Yeah, um, you are a member of your local seed bank. What? So, what is a seed bank, and why would somebody want to join one? Okay, and and I do need to update that because sadly, um, my seed bank no longer meets, but it was located at our um, our local food share. And what we would do would be to, um, we would decide which seeds we were going to grow out, and then we would divide it up, and we would grow uh, maybe a certain kind of tomato or, or bean or whatever, heirloom seeds that would come true, and then we would save those seeds. And we were trying to get up um, a bulk to, you know, share with the community. Also, um, uh, you know, I could talk too long on this, there's just a lot of advantages to a seed bank because the seeds that you would grow and save and grow and save would be adapted locally to where you are. And so those seeds would always produce well for that. Uh, seed banks can also just be really educational for somebody who doesn't know anything about it. 
you know, how to how to save the seed, and what's the process, what kinds of seeds can be saved, um, and then you know, basic of uh, preserving genetic diversity. So there's a lot of different things, and probably everybody's seed bank would maybe be focused on something. Now, does a, a seed, when you when you've created this seed bank, was it a public thing or can it be a private thing? Can it be a neighborhood thing? Just a few houses? There's really no set rule in order to create one, is there? No, I don't think so. This was just like I said. We have uh, what's called the the food share. That's what it's called, and it has you know food for people in need. And so within that food share. Um, somebody decided to, to start this, and I don't even remember how I found out. Probably I found out about it through Master Gardeners. I'm not sure. And so it can be anybody in the community and, yeah, started up and get interested people involved. And I guess whenever you, just like in the backyard, if you're going to save your own seeds, you've got to make sure that certain for certain like varieties don't cross or, or you only grow right. one of those type of varieties. Yeah, that was one of the things that, you know, we had classes about. And so, you know, if I was growing this tomato for the seed share, I would usually put it, like, in a pot on the opposite side of the house or, you know, you could cover it up with a sheet. There were um, there was instruction on that so that we wouldn't cross-pollinate. Oh, that's very interesting. Yep. Um, so how can we find out more about you and where can we find your books? Um well, um, I have a website that answers to either authorsmith.com or seedsaversseries.com. They'll both get to my website. And there you can find out about me and the books and all my other social media sites. What, and what, my blog is there as well. What age would you recommend uh, being the youngest for for parents to go ahead and get the book for their kids? If they're what what kind of age range would you would you say for your books? Well, um, at, starting at the beginning because the first two books are younger. Mm-hmm. We say ten and up, but I know there's kids as young as seven who have read or have them read to. So pretty uh, young on that. Great ser- they get a little older. Great series of books for the young gardener or if you've got kids or grandkids or nieces or nephews that kind of help you in the garden or kind of question what you're doing, this would be a great series for them to uh, see what could potentially happen if uh, we don't keep things in check in our generation. Well said. Well, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered us, uh, Sandra, and uh We uh, look forward to talking with you again. Thank you so much for taking time and sharing your information, not only with Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. Yes, thank you. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.